Uh, take a look at currencies and show you how the major pairs and crosses are shaping up so far in the early goings Wednesday out here in Asia. Uh, we've got Euro dollar trading at 13623, uh, dollar yen at 8224. Mario Singh is director of training and education at fxprimus.com. He joins us around the desk here at the SGX. He's going to help us do a bit of charting. Uh, the latest China rate hike, uh, Mario, we were talking about how uh, most markets, including commodities, basically shrugged it off. Is that the case with FX as well? That would be the case, Martin. I think uh, we're going to look at the Aussie dollar for our first start. Uh, what is the main reason they shrugged off the PBOC rate hike is because no one seemed to be able to tame the, uh, the, at least the Chinese economy. And for the Aussie dollar, we're going to look at the Aussie dollar in a, in, in a short while. The main reason is that the Aussie dollar is moving really in tandem with the Chinese economy. So what you're looking at here at the charts, we're looking at about 102. It is really flirting uh, at the resistance level of 102. Once it breaks over that, I'm seeing the Aussie dollar heading all the way towards 105 to 106. The main reason why they have been shrugging that off is because the Chinese authorities cannot simply tame the roaring economy, even though inflation is at about 4%. We also saw some movement higher in uh, the euro overnight as well. It seemed to be buying from Asian customers. What do you make of the direction for that? Uh, because we saw, you know, Aussie coming back. It was a little bit of risk off, even though it bounced. But euro really seemed to be one of the beneficiaries of the trade. Okay, let, let's pull up the chart here for the euro dollar. First thing I want to mention, now look on technical levels on the chart. We are looking at an ascending triangle over here, which means to say we are seeing prices heading upwards, but it hasn't really broken the resistance level of about, say, 137. Out of the euro dollar, the way I'm looking at it, it isn't really taking on too much of a risk like the Aussie dollar, simply because um, when Trichet was mentioning stuff in the World Economic Forum in Davos, Many of the players are looking at the euro dollar heading downwards now because he doesn't seem to be concerned in terms of inflation. So for the euro dollar, I don't see it heading upwards as of the Aussie dollar. I'm seeing actually breaking downwards in this uptrend line. It's going to head downwards to about, say, 132. 132. Mario, Bertie in Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. Mario, question. Uh, you know, the, the whole Egyptian thing, uh, you know, kind of took risk off the table. People became very scared. They started going into safer bets. But with this euro move, the Swissy, the CHF came, uh, there was a little, there's been a little bit of softness there. Have we gotten over this bout of, you know, financial market flu right now? Are people a little more, you know, willing to take on risk? Has that become apparent through your charting processes? Um, the short answer would be yes. A lot of that has already been priced in. In fact, we saw how the Egyptian authorities came in to do a little bit of intervention. So while much of that risk has been, uh, or rather that risk aversion has been priced in already, um, in that particular sense, I don't see the U.S. dollar heading upwards anymore for, for a small start. So a lot of that has been priced in from the Egyptian authorities. Um, in terms of risk, I do see that the Aussie dollar is continuing to head upwards right now. Let's take a look quickly at the dollar Swiss over here. We are seeing at a downtrend line for the dollar Swiss. You are seeing a descending triangle over here. In fact, the dollar Swiss and the euro dollar, I'm sorry, the euro Swiss for the last 24 hours, both of these currency pairs have had the largest move in terms of percentage gains in one day. So I still see the dollar Swiss heading upwards over here. It's going to break the technical levels over there. We see resistance at about 99 to a close to parity at 1. I see that still heading higher. Mario, what about the direct trade, the Egyptian pound, the reaction that we've seen there? Initially, uh, people were selling the pound, but then there has been money going back into that currency. What do you see playing out for uh, the Egyptian pound, given we haven't solved any of the unrest there yet? A lot of that has been priced in already, Karen. So in a sense, uh, let's, let's take a look quickly at the charts here in terms of the US dollar Egyptian pound. What I'm seeing over here, you look at the uptrend line and you see a huge resistance that's already been broken. I see those levels heading upwards, meaning to say, we look at a dot. Once it comes back down to convert at resistance level, I call this an area of conversion. Can't really get that out there. But in terms of an area of conversion, when prices dip back below, it's going to dip back about, say, 575, and it will continue to hit upwards simply because the movements in the Egyptian pound has already been priced in by the market. Okay, well, uh, we've been talking this morning about the um, rate hike in China. Uh, and one of the concerns, of course, for authorities when you hike rates in these economies is that you get fund inflows, more hot money going into the country. Uh, what's happening with the yuan? Because many are thinking we might see the yuan move to try and anticipate this. 
Well, let's take a stock check over here. After yesterday's rate high of about 25 basis points, we see lending rate about 6.06%. We see deposit rates at 3%. It's going to be a knee-jerk reaction. Obviously, they have got to move to increase interest rates. But having said that, the next secondary move would be a flow of funds back into, the, uh, in, into China. So while that is happening, I'm still seeing across the board as a proxy for the yuan, you are seeing how Malaysia has increased interest rates. You are seeing how Taiwan, South Korea, they are all increasing interest rates. So at this point over here, let's take a look at the US dollar Chinese yuan. Although you see a steep downtrend line, you see a descending triangle over here. I don't foresee that prices are going to break below the level of support. You see support over there. I see prices still heading upwards over here. It is going to move up about 660. Um, you are seeing prices about this level here. Let me just get it, get that X over there. You see in this huge descending triangle, prices will then start to bounce over the support and then once it breaks over the support, which will happen in the next three to six months simply because they are not able to tame the roaring Chinese economy. Mario, Bernie again. Uh, just a quick one on the, on the yuan. It, it, it always feels funny uh, to try to chart the, uh, the renminbi because it's such a managed currency. I mean, it is such a synthetic currency. But can you, are you doing that? Are you actually graphing the, uh, you know, the trajectory for the, for the renminbi with any more credibility, with, with any more conviction now that you know, they're clearly on the inflation-busting path or at least inflation-fighting path? Well, I'll put it this way, Bernie, as a forex trader, the, the Chinese yuan isn't really something that's freely floated in the market. So what we do as forex traders, we literally trade the proxy to the Chinese renminbi. What that means is that uh, concurrently, whenever Chinese numbers are either going up or they're coming down, you are seeing the Aussie dollar moving in tandem with those figures. As an example, when you see China's trade balance heading upwards, you are seeing the Aussie dollar going upwards as well. So really what's been happening for us traders, we are actually pricing in the movements on the Aussie dollar currency pair. Okay, and you, uh, you gave us a line in the sand at 105, clearly a contrarian call, because uh, most of your peers have been saying that the uh, juice has been pretty much let out of the Aussie. Mario, you keep well, okay? See you in a week or two. Mario saying fxprimus.com.